Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Don Karanik, your host here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 best PvP specials in Destiny 2. And as always, this is a completely subjective list based on my opinion and the opinion of my buddy Zoomzy, who provided not only his opinion for the spreadsheet as well as the gameplay you see now. If you wanted to go check him out, his link to his Twitch is in the description down below. And of course, as always, there's going to be a beautiful dark theme pictured out, linked out spreadsheet that will be made or has been made for this video fully public for you guys to do all you have to do is head over to my discord server link in the description down below and in the channel hashtag spreadsheets docs you can find a link to this spreadsheet as well as all my other spreadsheets and docs around the date that they came out i'm about to sound like one of those uh really excited commercial guys that has no reason to be excited but for a limited time only that's just fun to do for a limited time only we have 20 percent off of anything from gamer subs with code dichronic normally it's 10 percent off but literally for only today there's going to be 20% off for code Dichronic. So if you ever thought about getting gamer subs, you tried the samples or whatever, now is the time to do it because this is the best discount that I have seen in a very long time. And if you've never heard of gamer subs before, it is a powder based energy drink where you just mix powder with water, meaning that it's a lot cheaper than monsters. You know, they're usually like three or $4. Uh, Gamer Slaps is around 35 cents per serving. On top of that, it's also zero sugar, keto friendly, green organic caffeine, and you can very specifically control how much caffeine you get so you can stay under that 400 milligrams. And there's a lot of different flavors, so go check it out. GamerSlaps.com, code DECRINA for 20% off. Good stuff. Moving on to the main section of the video, let's go ahead and take a look at these spreadsheets, getting deep in the numbers, talking about the different types of weapons, the top 10, all that whatnot. It's a beautiful thing to see. If you've never seen it, this is my spreadsheet. Dark theme, color-coded, pictures, lots of crazy links. If you want to know how to get certain exotic weapons, if you want to know what certain catalysts do, everything is written here. Ignore the notes. I have not updated them in a while. Been called out recently for that. It also has all the sunsets. If you want to know when something is sunsetting, I will list it here, and when it has passed sunset, it will be in red, on top of all the other legends and all that crap. I also have sources. I'm a responsible adult. Can you believe that? It's beautiful. Now, as you can tell, I don't really do my top top 10s like a lot of other people do. I don't just talk about the top 10 and just say these weapons are great weapons. Instead, I'm going to go through each type of weapon, talk about the meta of Destiny 2, talk about why certain things are chosen over other things, and which will give you a better idea of how to do it in the wild by yourself. So you don't need to keep coming back to these videos, which is probably a bad idea, but I want to give you the best tools for survival. Because a lot of people will ask, why is the Beloved better than the Fate Cry's Foul, or the Long Shadow, or the Tranquility? These are the type of questions we'll be answering in this video. Right, so in regular Dichronic Faction, we're going to be working our way through the worst type of weapons, working our way upwards to the best types. First and foremost, for the only hand cannon, we have the Ariana's Vow. The general idea here is the Wombo Combo, shoot somebody in the head, swap very quickly to your hand cannon or something else, and finish them off with that weapon. Reminds me of the days of the Sniper BR combos in Halo, but it kind of falls short on this, is that it's a little bit more difficult to handle, and oftentimes it just makes me want to use a sniper rifle. And pretty much the same thing happens here for the Arbalist. It is a charge time sniper rifle with better aim assistance at close range, better sight for close range, but it's an exotic and you charge with it. Eventually, you need to graduate to using a sniper anyways. After that, we have the trace rifles. I like to think of them as more of a high-powered auto rifle. Generally, people see this and they can just hide around cover. They see a big old laser. They know they need to avoid it because it is a higher damage. And the general idea with these special ammo weapons is you want to kill them fast enough that people will not go behind cover because that is the problem with primary ammo gun fights is that people can escape. If your special ammo weapons cause them to escape all the time, then it's not worth using. However, it is stronger than an auto rifle and you can actually surprise people by its damage. Up next, we have the fusion rifles. Considered pretty widely as one of the new weapons, which is something that I would agree with if you're newer to the game, fusion rifles are actually a good option for you. Because of their low skill floor and of course their low performance ceiling, they're an ideal weapon to start off with and eventually graduate to these shotguns. The general use case for this weapon is it's like a pulse rifle at close range with special ammo damage, which is pretty easy to use and if you're just looking to relax or be casual, fusion rifles are definitely a way to do that. As far as fusion rifle archetypes for the legendary options, across the board, the high impacts are going to be the better performing ones with a lot of great options this season. Aaron's all having some ridiculous range coming from Menagerie. It's an incredible weapon, has nearly maxed out range. This thing goes like 10, 15 meters. It's some, it, it makes me upset sometimes. 
The problem is that most of these are going to be sunset, leaving us only with Exile's Curse, which is a pretty bad set of perks on it. Outside of that, the actual ranked item, we have Bastion, which actually works completely differently than all the other fusion rifles. First of all, it's a kinetic weapon, the only kinetic fusion rifle in the game. Secondly, it's instead of shooting seven bolts in its burst, it shoots a burst of three different slugs, meaning that it's pretty accurate when you want to shoot it at a very specific target, and on top of that, does insane amounts of damage. All of these pellets hitting into the body does more than 400 damage. If you don't know, most people have around 185 to around 200 health on them, depending on their resilience. So you can kill a Guardian twice over with this, which means this is a super killer. If you see a super in the game, even if they have like 55% resistance, this thing can often one-shot them anyways, which is very strong, especially in a special ammo weapon. And again, because of that high damage output, it's also very consistent and easy to use against regular enemies. And just as a little note here, this is actually the exotic quest for back in Season of Dawn. You can actually get this from the Cryptarch now with that little cipher thing, and I would recommend it after the Ariana's Vow for sure. Ariana's being a crazy Nightfall PvE exotic. Up next, we have the Grenade Launcher. It's pretty much across the board. Mountaintop is pretty much the only option that you're going to want to consider. Wither Horde came out this season. Some people do like using it, but it's just too easy to jump out of. Of course, predict, and oftentimes people, again, just, just jump out of it. When it comes to the other lightweight shotguns, they have this little mechanic where they bounce off of hard surfaces and you have to hold the trigger to airburst them when you want them to explode. And it's kind of inconsistent because you have to get a certain distance away before you can explode it. And... Honestly, I, I really don't like it. Now, Mountaintop actually excels over this for three main reasons. Firstly, it comes out of the box with spike grenades, meaning they can one-shot to the body any Guardian, which these other ones cannot always do that. Secondly, it fires perfectly straight and incredibly fast high-velocity micro-missile, meaning that you could do some pretty insane ranges and, of course, explode as fast as possible. And then finally, it explodes on impact with hard surfaces, which is generally where you want them to explode, is right where you're aiming on the ground. Whereas these other ones, you have to hold the trigger and then get used to the exploding in midair, it's really annoying. These other ones are more or less kind of like, a, I'm gonna damage you a little bit around the corner, this is more like, I'm going to kill you with this shot. Unfortunately, it is gonna be sunset this season, so we're gonna have to find ourselves a new mountaintop. Some people talking about the true teller for PvE stuff, but it just does not have that same oomph to it, does not fly straight, it does not have a, you know, a great set of perks every time you get it to roll, you have to get tons of them, there's a lot of problems. Up next, at the number two best weapon type in the game, we have the sniper rifles. Now, I, with that, I would say a caveat is that this is one of the highest performing types of weapons. So it's a higher performance ceiling than shotguns, in my opinion. If you have a pro with a sniper versus a shotgun, generally the pro can edge out a little bit more efficacy with that sniper because it's 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 one of those like infinite high ceilings because you can really land those headshots, you can really do well. So these sniper rifles, generally the 90 RPMs are going to be your best bet. They have a good combination of fire rate, aim assistance, perk options, availability. They're generally going to be the best options, and they can actually two-shot in the body, whereas the 140s cannot. However, a lot of these are going to be sunsetting this season, especially the beloved, the best sniper outside of Revoker. And with that, this season, we've had a surplus of really good 140 and 72 RPM options that you really need to consider using. Especially with these other ones going out the window, we have no idea what kind of sniper rifles we're going to be using next season, because we don't know what they're going to release next season, you're going to try to get used to these ones because they're pretty good options. Especially with these new rapid fire frame ones like Kellos and Widow's Bite, having some pretty good sights, which is very important, having a good close range clear sight, good perk options, and really good aim assistance, which is where the 140s have an advantage. They have higher aim assistance, but they do not two shot body shot which is a big problem. But even then, I would recommend you check them out because they're actually pretty fun. On the other side of the spectrum, we have these 72 RPM sniper rifles, including Bite of the Fox and Revoker, having this special property of one-shotting the body if they have kill clip or high energy fire or any type of damage bonus, maybe like inertial override, makes them a pretty interesting weapon for sure. On top of the fact, Bite of the Fox reissue this season with some pretty good perks, snapshot, opening shot, snapshot, moving target. Pretty great options, even though it has a worse aim assistance than some of these other options. And finally, for the best sniper in the game, we have the Revoker. Now, the fact that it's a 72 RPM sniper rifle does make it a little bit worse than it can be because of the fact that snipers that are usually lower RPM have worse aim assistance, but its main perk here, Reversal of Fortune, is just too good to combat. You miss a shot, you get the shot back to your mag after like three seconds. 
it's insane. You can go for those crazy 360 no scope headshots across the map and not worry about it because if you miss, you get the ammo back. And if you body them, you can follow up with your primary ammo weapon and chase them down. There is no scenario where you firing this weapon is really going to be a bad thing. Which is generally the biggest issue with sniper rifles is that you run out of ammo. Because the ammo is at the enemy, which is generally far away. So you have to run towards the enemy to get ammo, and you don't have a strong shotgun combating kind of weapon to do that. Unless you have something like Last Word or... Something like a sidearm like that. Unfortunately, it is sunsetting this season, which is very important to keep these other options in mind. And finally, for the best weapon type in the game, we have the shotguns. It's pretty widespread and well known that shotguns are pretty easy to use and still pretty effective in a lot of different scenarios. On top of that, generally the maps are made for 4v4 engagements. That's when they were first made. They were made for 4v4 game modes. They have a lot of cover, meaning that you generally can re-engage at a closer angle no matter what you're doing. And of course, there's also the new introductions of Felwinter's Lie and Energy Slot, which is just unfair. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So as far as the archetypes go, people would generally agree that the aggressive frames are doing and performing the best these days. We'll talk about why that is when we get there in a little bit. Let's talk about the other side of the spectrum, with the worst type of shotguns meaning the lightweight frames. Now the lightweights have actually started to rise in the meta. You're definitely seeing a lot more of them. They have a slight rated range advantage over the rapid fires and of course a faster fire than the uh, precisions and the aggressives. And on top of that, you move faster with a lightweight weapon, which is very strong in PvP. However, I have noticed that the range advantage over the rapid fires is not that significant that I'd rather just two shot shoot melee or shoot swap and that's where the rapid fires shine. The rapid fires are going to be the easiest shotgun type to use, the very low skill ceiling, which also means a lower performance ceiling, but that performance is actually not bad. I would say the biggest advantage that these rapid fires have is that they can fire way faster than anything else, so if both shotguns engage and neither person dies, most likely you're going to win or tie this battle with the rapid fires. And there's definitely that sweet spot where the two shot range of the rapid fires is a little bit longer than the one shot range of the aggressive. So you can find that little sweet spot, keep enemies within it, you can win most engagements with this weapon type. But eventually you're going to want to graduate up to one of these other options, which are going to be a higher performance ceiling. Up next we have the Buckshot Precision Frame Shotguns, because there are other precision frames that are slugs. These ones are actually still doing pretty well. Now the general idea, I, I feel like I've said the word general a lot, but the idea of why the aggressives are doing better than the precision frames, even though the precision frames technically have more range and will actually hit their pellets at a farther range, the aggressives have a longer one-shot range, which is the most important part about it. At some point, they nerfed their ranges many seasons ago, and the precision frames suffered the most that they brought the aggressive frames up to the forefront of the meta. So again, the most important part when it comes to these weapon types is the one-shot range, where the aggressives have a little bit of an advantage. And on top of that, a lot of these are being sunset this season, Prophet of Doom being the only option, meaning you have to get it from the raid, which is a low availability. Up next, we have these slug precision frame shotguns, and let me tell you, these things are actually really strong in the right hand. With the chaperone being the best option, having a perk where precision kills actually increase your damage, which inherently means you're increasing your range, which is a pretty powerful thing to have. Outside of that, you've got some pretty insane options. Blasphemer comes out of the box, curated roll with like quick draw opening shot, which is pretty crazy. I believe that's the roll anyways. It has a really good curated roll. You also have some energy options, especially this season one, first and last out. Good options here. Slice shot, opening shot is a good option. You can get tons of first in last outs this season they're very easy to get you just spam out that umbral engram and you can get crazy amounts of them so go ahead and go get some of these because they're pretty good and finally we have the aggressive frames the best performing type of shotgun in the game with actually a pretty good deal of options first and foremost the old options imperial plus mindbenders both getting sunset this season still good options if you have them they have some good perk option options perk option options <laughs> And obviously after this season, Astral and Felwinters, Kinetic and Energy are good replacements for that. Astral being a lot harder to get from Trials of Osiris, getting your very specific role. And then we have Felwinters. Honestly, I've almost put this in a bucket of its own. Felwinters Lie is so far and above the perfect shotgun in the game that you cannot do any better. So let's take a rundown. The best possible, and I mean literally, I cannot think of a better possible role for a shotgun is full choke, accurized, quick draw, opening shot. That's what this thing has. I believe it also has some other options in one of these two columns, but that is the best perk rolls that you can have 
on a shotgun, which is an aggressive frame. But wait, there's more. It's not an aggressive frame. It's a shot package frame, which means that it's an aggressive frame shotgun modified to have a more uniform pellet spread. So you're not being screwed by the weird pellet spread of Mindbenders, which can often net you better one-shot capabilities. You're going to have a very, very uniform shot. And it's also part of a quest that was pretty easy to do last season, and it's in the energy slot, which is where we want most of our special weapons these days, because a lot of the kinetic weapon primaries are the dominant ones. So, yeah. I don't know what else to say here. It's kind of unfair. Anyways, yeah, that's gonna be the end of the video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, concerns, or if there's something that I may have missed. Of course, if you tell me, make sure you tell me why, because that's gonna be the important part, is the reason why. Well, yeah, that's gonna be the end of the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name is Vinaya Chronic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.